a v noci dní nechci nic, možná ten ty jazdí na. The last time I acted, I acted with Julius Caesar. Really? Mm. Where? At school. Mm -hmm. mm. School acting. I was never any really good at acting. So that must be 22 years ago. The book of Julius Caesar. Yes, yes. I was one of the common men, I think. Because okay. even was Cicero. We nicknamed him Cicero because in that in in the in the in the in the in that book, Cicero was described as a man who would not follow what other men had begun. Now the first encounter I, I you know I made with him was Marere was renowned for for bullying, teasing. So I remember he was going to class in the morning, early in the morning. And he found me out of the dormitory, crying, actually, literally crying. I wanted to go home. So he called me, said, Ati umano is yoha, nti indares katega. Ati norga nti nindigandiza. Ati uriwa chawe, nti 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 nti. Yeah, ati nindika norra. And I want to know what terra, what, you know, they are teasing us. Ati kandi mpuru wa wukari yaha maya azi, ata wa kata ku... Attack craving, attack, attack protecting. And now I don't do much in this job. Do not teasing and nature. At me at home, brother. At Karaj, you don't do a quarter hoop, who's young and bitty. That's my first encounter with him, and it made me, you know, like him so much. One thing I observed was that, uh, well, I'm seven also had his own independent mind and life and uh, all through life. Uh, when it came to debating, uh, he would go to the point of hair, sp hair splitting. <laughs> you couldn't take him for granted. No. <laughs> you had to give him a very solid ground on which you are standing to convince him that uh, that was... Uh, so we can have him himself. I am particularly impressed by his theories uh, in the early part of the struggle, of his struggle. Uh, when he crossed the Lake Tanganyika, which is the deepest lake in the world, I think, and he doesn't know how to swim, but, but he crossed it on, in a canoe, and on that lake there are pirates. Uh, he went to Burundi, he was looking for weapons. That is the, it is in the early part of, a, uh, of the struggle. Nobody knows about it, but, but this is where he passed through. I mean, he committed himself to fight for democracy. Uh, he was uh, at that time fighting against Tamil. He normally did it belonged to organization which he didn't lead. Consequently, he has been, the, his whole training was a train to be a leader. And they was uh, described as a, a man who was thinking too much. Yes. And that is suited you were then. He was a great thinker. They were intellectuals. Uh, we were intellectuals. In fact, I was standing with them when the, uh, the flag was, the British flag was brought down and our flag at Kororo. But I told them that we were heading for disaster. <laughs> Mm-hmm.
No, it's all right. You can hear me? Yeah. Please start by sharing your earliest recollections. Oh, the earliest. I, I wrote in, in my book that I must have been either four months or less because uh, my mother went to Okuiho Nyatsi to to pull to pluck grass from the ground using her hands. And she 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 put me down lie, lying on my back and I was looking at her from the catant of my eye the in the corner of my eye and she was moving away and away and away and I got so worried that she was abandoning me until she came back after some time and said Ma Ma Mama you are still here so I keep telling people that it must have been four months or less, because otherwise, if it, if, I don't know when, when children start crawling, or quadrilla, because if I was able to quadrilla, I would have followed her. The young Museveni was the first born of Amos Kaguta and Esther Kokondeka. He was born into the pastoralist and nomadic community of the Bahima of Ankore. At the time of his birth, the family lived in Nkondo village in the district of Ntungamo in western Uganda. Aside from his parents and uncles, his great-grandmother, Nyinanchuende, was a big influence on Museveni in his formative years. Nyinanchuende was the wife of Kashanku, Museveni's great-grandfather. She would often regale the young Museveni with tales of the times long before his birth. One such tale was her encounter with white colonizers who were working with African mercenaries. These mercenaries would be instructed to shoot their fellow Africans arbitrarily for various reasons. On this occasion, Ninanchu and the hid herself, her young son and a calf in a swamp and remained there till the group had long gone. She often taught her great-grandson about the virtues of courage. Cattle keepers were required to be innovative, courageous, and dedicated to the survival of their families and their livelihood, the herd. From a young age, boys worked closely with their fathers, going out with the herds and returning late. This is why many families in the community rejected the formal education that required going to school, because it deprived the family of the child's assistance at work and limited the child's traditional upbringing. Museveni's father, however, was surprisingly open-minded on the question of schooling. So in 1952, Yoweri Museveni began his journey in formal education. This was 1952, uh, second term. So I would have been like, uh, like, like seven almost, seven, I think. Oh, I remember very clearly to, to, because they told us that you, 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 when, because when I came to the school I joined one B. One B was like uh, pre-primary, uh, and we were told we should term you have second term, so I couldn't forget then. Uh, and then we were writing in the sand, writing in the sand with our finger like this. And then later on, they, 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 they said we buy slates. Uh, now, this 1952, I was in a girls' school. We were about five of us uh, who were there, boys. Uh, there was uh, 
Sam Magara. He was there with us. Then this man called Nasan Tandekwiri. He was there also. And then we had uh, a Rwanda boy. His father was called Kachere or something. And then myself. After Yoweri Museveni, Amos Kaguta and Esteri Kokundeka went on to have a daughter, Violet Kajubiri. And in 1960, had their second son, Caleb Akanduanaho, who in future would take on the nom de guerre Salim Saleh. In 1959, Yoweri Museveni joined Mbarara High School for two years, where he did what was then called junior secondary, and thereafter joined Ntare School for six years of high school. With a Christian foundation strongly encouraged by his charismatic mother, Esteri Kokundeka, and the grounding of the work ethic of the Bahima cattle-keeping background, formal education was a major advantage from seven. His time in school fundamentally changed his understanding of society and world affairs. History was particularly illuminating for him. He was enthralled by the study of the Ottoman Empire, the use of ships to cross oceans, and the establishment of trade routes across Africa and the globe. The tales of Bartholomew Diaz reaching the Cape of Good Hope in 1488, and the first Arabs and Europeans reaching the East African coast in the 1800s were of specific interest to the young Museveni. They reinforced his belief in the ability of Africans to improve themselves and their circumstances. By 1966, when Milton Obote abrogated the Uganda constitution, Yoweri Museveni and a few of his contemporaries were in their final year of Ntare school. Before that, in 1964, a referendum had been held concerning the Lost Counties dispute between the Buganda and Bunyoro kingdoms concerning Buyaga and Bugangaisi counties. The question was whether these counties were to remain as part of the Buganda kingdom, be returned to the Bunyoro kingdom, or instead become a separate district. The dispute was won in favor of Bunyoro. After the independence, you know the, that short history. From 1962, Obote takes power. Uh, then, Buganda, Buganda is the, the Kabaka becomes the president, non-executive. Uh, then, by 64, there were already differences. They were neuro, when they went to rank, when the, the leaders here went to Lancaster to accept the general principles of independence. There was a clause that Bunyoro Kingdom, the counties which they lost under Kabarega, should determine their fate by th through a referendum. So, so they brought it in Parliament. This king, we need a referendum as part of the independence agreement. B Buganda uh, opposed it, but then the, the other members said no. We should have it. So they went for elections in the, in the, the lost king, counties and they voted to leave Buganda and be part of Unyoro. That's the Yaga and Ugangaisi. Previously, the map of Uganda was, it used to touch the car, but, but uh, when they voted, they, they cut off those, three, those two counties. <coughs> and uh, that is how the fighting started. You know, it's a pity. When Obote came into power, before he, became, before he came to power, uh, when UPC was formed, he made a speech at a rally in Jinja that UPC had come to destroy Mengo. It's a complicated uh, situation. Buganda became colonized before Uganda was formed. And the agreement, the, f the 1900 agreement they had with the British was for Buganda. And Uganda had not been formed. But there was a provision in Clause 3, I think, which said that when the protected, protected was formed, Buganda will be a province of the 
protectorate of equal status with the other three provinces. But as it turned out, the other three provinces were not formed. So Buganda stuck out as a sore finger. And everybody looked at it and said, ah, they are being treated differently from the districts, blah, blah, blah. And this is what Obote meant, that he was going to sort out Buganda. And he did so by reducing it to district level. In May of 1966, there was growing agitation from the Buganda leadership demanding the removal of the central government from Buganda land, where the national capital had been established in Kampala. Riots were staged in different parts of Buganda. Three years later, Kabaka Mutesa died in London. In the midst of the chaos, Milton Obote abrogated the 1962 constitution of Uganda and declared himself president. It's been said that you'd like to put an end to the Kabaka ship. Is that so? <laughs> it's not my problem to put uh, an end to Kabaka ship. We have four Kabaka ships in Uganda. And it's not, uh, I don't have to go for one. If I wanted to put an end to Kabaka ship, I would go for four, not one. It was abrogated in 1966. At that time, we were in senior six. In fact, it was one of the <laughs> sad days. Uh, I was, I think, the only Muganda <laughs> in, <laughs> in Mbaguta house. We had a common room and we heard that everything had. And uh, I was very sad about it. And I think the only sympathy I got was from Museveni and there was my friend Adam in the case. The other boys said, well, they were not bothered about really. King. And at that time, the kingdom of Ankoli was also there, but it was not yet affected by the abrogation of the constitution. Yes, in, uh, in February, February 22nd, when, when Obote abrogated the constitution. But there is another aspect that has been felt throughout the country. This includes the fact that now we have a new constitution. It is also clear that because of the troubles, it was not possible for the whole country and even for the government to give the whole attention to the matter of nation building. A considerable amount of attention had to be given in concerning the dangerous situation which had developed in Uganda. We were in the dormitory at Ntari, Mbaguta House. How can somebody abolish our constitution? Then we had some UPC boys who started saying, what will you do? Uh, Obote has got army. Then I said, but what is army? I can join army any time. First of all, he was in the scripture union. <laughs> so he was very... And also very political. Uh, he was very active about what was going on. And uh, we got close to, at that time, before the kingdoms were abolished, we had also a lot of access to, to the Enganz. I think it was called Kaijiriza at that time. So we, 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 I, I, I organized the two, three of us, went to see the chief minister of Ankore, Nganzi, Katichiro, Kahijiriza. We said, we want to fight uh, Obote. And then Kahijiriza said, no, but you, you children, you, you young people, do, don't uh, panic so much. This Obote will collapse by himself. Because, because 
I, a few, two days before or after, Nkrumah's government collapsed in, in Ghana. And then Kaijeza said, you look, if Nkrumah was much stronger than this robot, he, you, 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 you hear that he has collapsed. And, uh, so you, you go back and study. Uh, which means he, he, he didn't agree with our idea. So that's when we said, now what we do, we must, we must go to Tanzania. To, to start, we must go and study in Tanzania. Uh, because we had been reading from 1962 in the library, there were stories and the newspapers about Frerimo fighting the, white, the Portuguese in Mozambique. As a young man, Yoweri was a very brilliant man, intellectually. He was very bright. And uh, he was actually one of the best students in the class doing very well, especially the art subjects, but he was an all-round man. Even in um, uh, science subjects, he used to do very well. I had intended to do English literature at Makere, but Butagira came and talked about doing law and whatnot and so on and so forth. So I think I then decided to, to do law. Kategaya, myself, and others decided to, to do law. And I thought, we also thought Museven was going to do the same. <laughs> and uh, when the results came, we had the necessary qualification to do law at, at Dar es Salaam. Uh, three principles, and what, we have had them. Then we go to, to Dar es Salaam. We only have a trial at the university, choosing subjects. We noticed that he was not, he not, he was not doing law, he had decided to do. Three to two. That means law, political science, and economics. Dar es Salaam was a very, I should say, a very good university, a very open university. You would have some personalities coming to give you some interesting lectures. And uh, those lectures were quite enlightening. Some of them were people who were really questioning the system of uh, um, the economic system at that time, which was capitalism versus socialism. And uh, we had also teachers in the university who were people like Professor Livingstone, who was a capitalist, and uh, you had Professor Sentage, who, for instance, that one was a Bulgarian, those were communists or socialists. And uh, so they were presenting different views and Tanzania was the center of socialism at that time. And liberation movement people, uh, and so on. So we, we got in. And uh, Tan Youth League was on the, at the university. We were not Tanzanians, but we joined. He was joined into that. And uh, one could see from that time on that uh, uh, you really see Joel was passionate about that. He could give, give examples. So yeah, I think this is the center. We could also see, everybody could see, it was clear that there was need for change of direction. And then we we'll, we we'll compare our own the way things were being run in Uganda, in Kenya, with the, the way Mwali Munyerere was leading Tanzanians and so on, bringing them together instead of tearing them apart. And uh, uh, we were seeing a clear example of good leadership and a good example. And uh, we were seeing a future for that country. But then we were also seeing difficulties in the other countries like Uganda then and Kenya at that time. My my idea was if Af Africans can fight uh, Portuguese, uh, how about this Oboti? How can he abolish our constitution? So uh, that's uh, that's why we said we put our, our choices, all of them, to Dar es Salaam. 
first choice, second choice, third choice. If they don't invite, invite admit me in Dar es Salaam, I, I will not go to university. In the meanwhile, Museveni had used to have a lot of interaction with the liberation people in Mount Lani in particular. And it is then that he somehow he organized for we members of Yusuf to go to Mozambique to see the liberated areas. I think Mondlane wanted the publicity to show that at least they had liberated certain areas and so on and so forth. So we met, I think Museveni organized it and we sneaked out of the university to go to Mozambique. So that's when I came with the idea, but, but I said, but if Mondlane is saying that there's a liberated area. So you students, if you, if you are serious, let's go and see it. What's the problem? But at that time, the Tanzanian government was very strict. Also did not, uh, and it, everything had to be done secretly. Because if they got to know of it, then we would be in trouble as students. So some of us <laughs> were scared. We sneaked out of university, went to, to Munazmoja, where there was a bus. Then they put us on a bus, which moved us to some place. And uh, then we joined the, the army trucks of the Frelimo people. That's the first time I was in a place where there were no vehicles. Everything had to be on foot, and uh, the major equipment, gun, and uh, so there we are. So we went and visited the liberated area, and uh, it really changed the, it exposed the, the campaign of, 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 of these secret services of the, of the Europeans. Uh, they were very happy, the freedom fighters were very happy because we were able to prove that, yes, you see the summer in the nightclubs, but they are, they are those who are fighting. Mm. Carmike was really revolutionary. And um, uh, Rodney was also another revolutionary. Walter Rodney, yeah. And uh, so you were, became very close to them. And I think that's where he started looking the other way. <laughs> I think that's the, the, the turning point. So 1970, we came back. And uh, of course, Kobota was still in government. In Dasala, of course, we used to be very anti Obote and whatnot and so on and so forth. <laughs> but then we graduated and we had to come back and work. And uh, We joined, I joined the DPP's department, and I'm seven joined the president's office to my surprise because I. <laughs> uh, I had actually joined uh, Oboti's office. I was working there. But now Amin comes in. Now it was clear Amin had no idea because Oboti, Oboti had some ideas, although he, he had. Uh, he had, a, he had a, a distortion in his understanding of politics. And that's when Amin came and overthrew the government in 71. Amin was also running away from criminal uh, prosecution because they were involved in Congo, in gold. In, I think he was also involved with Obote. I, I can't remember. I'm told they were involved together. But there were scandals with, within the uh, the government. So, and uh, both they wanted to arrest Amin, so Amin overthrew him before. Trouble soon began to emerge in the Obote Amin alliance. Milton Obote reduced Idi Amin's role in the army from commander in chief of all armed forces to army commander and took on control of all the armed forces himself. Amin, however, had built a base in the military by recruiting heavily from West Nile, his home area. There was a growing suspicion that Obote was going to arrest Amin, 
So in a preemptive move, while President Obote was attending a Commonwealth meeting in Singapore, Idi Amin executed a coup d'etat on January 25th, 1971. The members of the Uganda Army and Air Force decided to take over from the civilian rule because of the the last arrangement which were made by the Dr. Apollo Milton Obote to disarm the old tribe of Uganda except his own tribe Langi and Acholi. And also that is the point which brought all this problem. Now one morning I wake up of course, we had no, I had no vehicle at that time. We used to take a taxi from Najanankumbi to the car park and then walk up to. So one morning I wake up, I walk. As normal, I get to, to go to parliament building. And I find it surrounded by soldiers. They say, go, go. <laughs> so I said, look, I moved back to the car park. And as I was arriving at the park, shooting also started and the, the taxi people used. I got to a taxi and tried to get back to Najana Nkumbi. The people, I think the man abandoned us at Kibuya says, you people. So I walked to Najana Nkumbi. And as I got there, we had the announcement that the government had been overthrown. I, I mean, comes in, he has no idea at all. Uh, He's simply there, president, army, what? Being manipulated by foreigners, the British, the Israelis, of course, we didn't care about our. Uh, so that's why we said, no, no, no. For Amin, we fight. One morning, I'm in my office there. Yes, somebody comes traveling in a, a Volkswagen variant and tells me the seven is in the end. He wants to see you. <laughs> <laughs> what? He said, yeah, he wants to see you. By that time, I think the, the, the struggle to remove Amin had started. And so he, he briefed me about the whole thing. I said, he's now here. He was going to Kampala to look up Kategaya and we try to team up and then see how we can organize to, to do things. We discussed the whole project. It was a very dangerous <laughs> project. <laughs> uh, so the question was, how do you fight? So either we would fight with the UPC together, and we told UPC, we can fight with you if you agree to form a broad front. NRM, yeah. don't, don't just go there and say UPC, UPC, we are fighting for UPC, because it's, UPC is a narrow, it's a narrow, a narrow force. Uh, even the elections of 1962, they never got more than 50%, because it was sectarian, it was Protestants, Protestants of some areas, not even of the whole, not of, not, not, certainly not, not the ones of Buganda. The ones of Buganda were Kabaka Yeka. So, then DP, Catholic. Then Kabaka Yeka, Buganda Protestants. So our line was, let's unite the people. Because Amin is against all of you. It was not a joke. It was a very, very tough experience. Uh, he had just sent away the Indians in 1972. So we were undergoing a very uh, a time that would mark uh, the rest of, the, of Uganda's history because the sending away of the Indians meant really a change from a colonial economic arrangement, something else. 
This is even more important at the present time when we are in the process of transferring the control of our economy into the hands of our indigenous people. But no one will be allowed to acquire more than one business, industry, or buildings. Yeah. To assist government in carrying out this exercise smoothly and uh, equitably, forms have been prepared, which I believe you are already familiar with us a result of the meeting which you had with my ministers this morning. I would like to take this opportunity to advise the outgoing Asians that it is in their own interest that they fill the appropriate forms as a matter of urgency to enable their property to be disposed of, of as soon as possible. Amin has already expelled the Asians and British, all the British judges and lawyers were dismissed. We had to ask our students to go and become magistrates, become prosecutors, and become defenders before they finish the, the course. So it was a very difficult time, but the most difficult thing about during that time was disappearance of people. 